so asking, uh, asking a really basic question, why should we care about FGI? I mean, what does it matter? If you think about investment, clearly you can finance, you can have investment, mostly for domestic investment, and uh, FDI might not be important in this whole story. And I, I would argue that FDI is important for economic development, economic growth, it, through at least three mechanisms. One mechanism is that FDI brings investable resources to a country where there is a lack of domestic resources. Many low-income countries face a problem increasing investment rates. If you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, investment rates there are around 15, 20 percent. If you look at East Asia, 30, 35 percent. China's got about 35 percent of GDP investment rates. So you're going to get investment rates around 30, 35 percent, which we know using a simple model of economic growth, you've got to get investment from somewhere, and FDI can provide some, uh, some of that. The second reason is that FDI can be very important for technology transfer, especially if you have joint ventures. Technology is difficult to get to the market, to a market-based transaction. FDI can allow you to bring technology in, which is very important in today's uh, in this globalized world. The third mechanism is that FDI, and this is very, the very good work on this in economics, can lead to, knowledge spill, uh, to technology spillovers, knowledge spillovers. You imagine a car company coming into a country, you know, investing in, 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 say, in particular industrial electronics. The spillover effect with the workers working in that company might go somewhere else, a domestic company, and they'll bring their human capital that they've learned, they picked up through that initially work in m and &E, and they can actually, the country can benefit from that. Knowledge spillovers are actually, in my view, perhaps the most important mechanism. I'm much less convinced about the investment resource argument because FDI's ratio of GDP is around 4-5%. I think we saw some data on that. Uh, on on uh, technology transfer depends on the industry, depends on the licensing that we have with, uh, with multinationals. But knowledge spillovers, the work I've seen and which I've done work on, there's no doubt about it that knowledge spillovers are very important, which means that FDI can and has the robust evidence on this in economics can lead to significant economic growth. However, there's one thing that I'm going to talk about in this discussion on, on, on the Runkath report, that it's, it's, a, it's not an unconditional relationship. It's very much conditional institutional quality. So we see then, I've done to work on this, that FDI effect on growth depends on whether the country has good institutions or not. The country has weak institutions, FDI does not seem to impact on economic growth very much. Country has strong institutional institutions, FDI effect on growth is much more stronger. So in other words, the responsibility of growth through FDI is not unconditional, it's conditional institutional quality. Okay, so that's something, just to keep that in mind. Now, so that when I want to go back now to this question about, you know, the, the global minimum tax, and here are some things that I'm going to be a slightly a dissenting voice in this issue, because I do think from a development point of view, there are important questions. First question I would ask is that, if you think about two companies investing, uh, multinationals investing in countries, one could be Shell, BP, investing in oil and gas. Other could be several Korean FDI companies who invested in labor intensive manufacturing, Chinese companies, Japanese companies. And the difference is that if you're in a resource intensive sector, the tax ETR, the effective tax rate, doesn't really matter because there's so much rent in that sector, so much profits in the sector. But if you're a foreign, if you're a Korean F company coming into Bangladesh to export labor intensive manufacturing, that tax can bite, right? Because the profits in labor intensive manufacturing is not very much. It's based a lot on volume. Profit per unit of production or sales is not very much. So at that point, it can bite. So then the question is that if this, the global minimum tax leads to a situation where countries which need FDI for labor intensive manufacturing are not, we might find, find either the international decide to reinvest their own countries. So instead of outsourcing, we have onshoring, which has already happened in the US, um, versus a situation where you have FDI coming most of the resource intensive sectors because they don't really care about the ETR. So I do have a concern that will this push away the possibilities we've seen in East Asia of export and manufacturing driven a lot by FDI? Look at Thailand, look at Cambodia, look at Laos, look at Vietnam, look at Bangladesh. So um, some also including South Asia here. So, so there is a concern I have that we need to be worried about sectoral distribution of FDI. We cannot just say, look, this is the, uh, something that is not independent of sectoral differences because we do want countries to get FDI, productive FDI, in the sectors that matter for economic growth. Right? So that's my first point. The second point is that, um, that I want to say is that you know, um, there is a difference between inward-looking FDI and outward-oriented FDI. To be very honest, I'm much more interested in outward-oriented FDI, export-oriented export FDI. Because if you are a company coming in to invest in that country's 
uh, to produce the domestic market, you already have quite high rents. These are usually protective markets, there are, so you have a higher profit per unit sales. If you're exporting, you're exporting against other companies that are in the same space, so as I said, garments, for example, there is a difference there. And what we want to make sure is that we protect export-oriented FTI. So again, with the global minimum tax, affects that distribution between inward-looking FTI, which in my view is not very developmentally, well, it may not have developmentally positive implications, versus export-oriented FTI. So again, there's an important question about which way is the FTI going in, the, in these countries. The third point I want to make is that I want to bring the question of institutional quality. So imagine you have two countries with the same global minimum tax, 15%. But one country has weak institutions, the other country has strong institutions. What are we going to see? We're going to see countries move their investments, MMEs, move their investments to the higher countries, high social quality. But also we know that low-income countries are the ones with weaker institutions. And again, then there's a question here that if institutional quality matters, and are we going to see this movement away from low-income countries with weak institutions? We need to be worried about that. So these are things which I have to, I think which, where I think we need to have more research because I think that these are questions where we need to have empirical evidence that can explain exactly what are the implications of this minimum tax on the, bro the broader development questions that we need to ask. And I think if we don't have that evidence base, I'm still not completely convinced about how the tax, the global tax might work. Right. That, sorry. <laughs>